Another day of long lines across the valley at vaccination clinics and testing sites. I'm Wiley Jahari here at Bow Medical Center in Calexico as we hear why they're under stress once again. How COVID is affecting local restaurants. I'm Luis Lopez and tonight we'll explain what challenges restaurants are still facing as COVID cases continue to surge. Plus, the relationship between the hospital and its board has generated a lot of interest. Tonight, another public meeting will tell you if anything is new and on the way. 13 on your side starts now. Good evening and thank you so much for choosing 13 on your side tonight. I'm Scott Crow. New at 10, the Hospital District Board 1 voted to approve multiple building projects proposed by Yuma Regional Medical Center. Among the approved projects, improvements to the hospital's lab. Concerns over the condition of the lab were brought up at the Special District Board meeting last week. Improvements aim to give technicians more room to test for cancer and ensure proper conditions are kept to maintain accurate testing and sterile equipment. The lab also has been used for COVID testing during the pandemic. YRMC needed the district's board approval for the projects as they are in excess of half a million dollars. This board has presented adequate financial information um, regarding the requested uh, capital improvements. Other approved projects include construction for a new MRI in the hospital, which will end the need to transport patients to another facility. No official date has been set for the beginning of construction. High COVID-19 cases stretching across Yuma and Imperial counties. The positivity rate is 30% in Yuma, almost the same in Imperial County. This means currently about three out of every 10 tests in Yuma are COVID positive. That's a jump we haven't seen since about a year ago. The Yuma County Public Health Director shares with us the most recent cases they're seeing for Omicron variant and also touches on the positive cases that aren't reported. We expect that even though we're reporting a high number, the number is probably underreported. The number of actual cases is actually higher because a lot of people are asymptomatic or aren't going to go get tested until they have those symptoms. Other positive results go unreported using at home test kits. There's no requirement to report those and there's no formal mechanism, according to the director. Her advice, reach out to your health care provider and don't wait. The ADHS Emergency Preparedness Director expects cases to peak in a week or two. She says that's based on trends they're seeing across the country. Now, those in the front lines continue battling COVID-19 while helping others recover from the virus. But this new surge is leaving some medical centers across the Imperial Valley very short-staffed. 13 on your side's Wiley Jahari joins us from Calexico with more. Yeah, you can see the same line that we showed you last week here at Vaux Medical Center. Behind me, it's still just as long, if not longer. This due to the recent surge leaving medical centers short-staffed once again. Vaux Medical Center in Calexico currently has about 14 members of its staff out with COVID-19 and only one receptionist on the clock, with two also out due to COVID. This as a long line forms of locals wanting to get tested or vaccinated. Uh, here locally in our community, we have a shortage, uh, shortage of uh, staff. Um, we're trying to deal as much as we can with the situation. Vaux Medical Center says that nearly half of its staff is gone and can't work because they have symptoms, causing a strain for those who are able to work. We have to use other staff to cover the different areas that you know that they're not used to those areas. And Meanwhile, El Centro Regional Medical Center is going through the same struggle. We have about 29 of our staff members that are out with COVID symptoms. Dr. Edwards says about 13 of those staff members are nurses. To avoid a hospital surge, much like the one in 2020, ECRMC is intentionally reducing its staff. We've asked non-essential employees uh, to stay at home uh, and that is to kind of reduce the total uh, staff that's exposed to COVID-19. The Imperial County Public Health Department says new guidelines allow 
for public health workers to work if they have COVID-19 as long as they're asymptomatic. Now that's not stopping the stress that we're seeing here at Vaux Medical Center. We're also just learning that the Heber Elementary School District has closed down its classrooms because they are seeing over 300 absences across the district per day. This closure will last starting today until January 24th. I'm Wally Jahari reporting from Calexico. Local restaurants are also feeling the impact of this latest coronavirus surge. Our own Luis Lopez spoke to restaurant owners to see how they're adapting. COVID cases continue to rise, and while it affects all industries of our local economy, local restaurants have been among those affected the most. But yeah, I'm definitely worried about it. The National Restaurant Association says nationwide, over 80,000 restaurants have temporarily or permanently closed since the pandemic started. Michael Beal is the owner of the Press Cafe and Bistro taking over the business about 10 months ago. And while he knew running a business during the pandemic would be a challenge, he, like many of us, didn't anticipate we would once again be in the middle of another surge. Already this pandemic has put some big kinks in, getting stuff from point A to point B, so me trying to find food products to bring in, and plastic and paper products are real hard. Other businesses have felt the impact too. Owner of the Garden Cafe, Debbie Gwynn, says she's had trouble finding items needed for her business due to the ongoing supply shortage. We've been unable to get a lot of our products that we normally kind of take for granted. A lot of the um, probably to-go things that we use and that sort of thing. With COVID surging again, it's prompted businesses to look at their outdoor dining setups. Over at Du Bois Italian on Main Street, a new ordinance passed by Yuma City Council will require five feet of space for pedestrians to walk through. The ordinance is something that Du Bois is welcoming. Yes, and the reason why we agree with it is just because of the fact that a lot of the customers have complained about like not really knowing where to walk when the whole sidewalk is kind of taken over. The businesses I spoke with also reiterated to me their commitment to keeping customers and staff safe. Things like mask wearing and social distancing are still very much encouraged. Reporting in Yuma, Luis Lopez, 13 on your side. And that brings us to our question of the day. Are you concerned with the high COVID case numbers in our area? 68% of you said yes. 32% of you voted by saying no. Thank you so much to everybody who participated. Across the border now, where Mexicali is enforcing stricter COVID protocols again due to the rise in cases as of today, public places including movie theaters, stores, and restaurants can only be at 50% capacity. Classes were also canceled for kindergarten, elementary, and junior high school students until further notice. That's because currently you have to be at least 13 years old to get the vaccine. In the last few weeks, the state of Baja has seen more than 1,000 positive COVID cases daily. The high COVID spread due to the Omicron variant has made us change the epidemiological traffic to light to orange. It means that we are going to reduce community mobility to 50%, but we are not going to close the border. However, we will be monitoring the behavior of the pandemic in the state of California. Vaccination stations will also be open seven days a week to get more Mexicali residents vaccinated. Let's take a look outside. Currently 54 degrees. We do have some breezy conditions around Yuma and mostly cloudy skies out there as well. If you do happen to see the moon tonight, it's at 72%. We're waiting for the next full moon on the 17th. Coming up in your first alert forecast, unusually warm temps. Yes, more days in the 70s. We're also looking for a chance to maybe hit 80. I'll let you know when we may see that. Blanket of clouds, how much longer will these clouds in this cover block out the sun? And another fantastic viewer weather photo to share with you. All of this coming up in just a little bit. On to some positive news now, Imperial Valley College is currently in the process of changing its mascot. The Arabs will soon be known as the Desert Warriors, the Desert Fox, or the Sun. So, which one do you like best? They want you to be a part of this historic change and are even asking you to submit a drawing for the new mascot. Once the best submissions are narrowed down, the entire campus will get to vote and then it will be a, touched up by a graphic artist. February 28th is the deadline. And Girl Scout cookie season will soon be upon us. This year you can get your favorites like always, but you also have a new option called 
Adventurefuls. Yeah, Adventurefuls. The Girl Scouts website describes the cookie as, quote, an indulgent brownie inspired cookie with caramel flavored cream and a hint of sea salt. Last year's edition, the French toast inspired toastier, is also available. And this year, you don't have to seek out Girl Scouts selling the coveted cookies. You can just order a box or four through the service already available in some cities, but it will expand nationwide next month. Again, that's the DoorDash app. And Garth Brooks is back in San Diego on his stadium tour at Petco Park on March 5th. He is the best-selling solo artist, country artist in American history. KYMA is giving away three sets of two tickets to three lucky winners. All you have to do is go to KYMA.com and enter by tomorrow. That means you have about an hour and 50 minutes. One hour, 50 minutes to do so. The winner will be notified on Friday. The Biden administration is set on shipping millions of COVID tests to Americans across the country. I'm Skyler Henry in Washington with those details and the potential good news researchers say they found with Omicron. Plus, we take a look at kids heading back to school, but who's going to teach them the need for substitute teachers across the U.S. and what's being done about it? The highly anticipated 27th annual Yuma Home and Garden Show returns to the Civic Center. See hundreds of displays and what's new in home improvement. Compare, shop, save, and win big at the hourly cash grab and other giveaways. Attend cooking demos, visit the arts and crafts displays, and enjoy the free classic car show. Get all your gardening questions answered in the Garden Club showroom. Don't miss all the fun. It happens January 14th, 15th, and 16th at the Yuma Civic Center. Spectrum Mobile has the best deal in mobile. Get unlimited for only $29.99 when you get two plus lines. Plus, nationwide 5G is included. Switch and save up to 60%. Visit SpectrumMobile.com. Protected workers mean stronger businesses. We're all vaccinated already. When you visit our business, we are taking steps to protect you. Please protect us as well. Get vaccinated and help us keep our businesses open and our community healthy. At St. Louis Walking Clinics, we're vaccinating everyone five years and older at no cost. For more information, call the Regional Center for Border Health at 866-604-5537. Keep our doors open.org. Now, the most explosive force in music returns to San Diego. Garth Brooks, Saturday, March 5th, 7 p.m., Petco Park. Tickets on sale Friday, January 14th, 10 a.m. Pacific. One price, $94.95, all inclusive. But only at Ticketmaster.com slash Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, Petco Park, an incomparable night never to be forgotten. On sale Friday, January 14th, 10 a.m. Pacific. Presented by Amazon Music. A community is stronger when we support each other. And that's what DSW Local Links is all about. Connect with your favorite restaurants. Check out activities your family can enjoy. Preview upcoming events at our fantastic venues. And it's right at your fingertips. Just go to KYMA.com and click on Local Links right there at the top of the page. Or scan the QR code on your screen with your phone. DSW Local Links. Supporting local business. Connecting you to what makes your life better. If you're 45 or older, you need to get yourself screened for colon cancer. This disease can be very treatable when caught early. So, if you're a man or a woman, 45 or older, take control. Get screened for colon cancer. Thirteen on your side starts now. Welcome back. I'm Scott Gross. The seven-day average of new COVID-19 cases is up 47% over the previous week to more than 750,000 a day. Hospitalizations are also surging up 33% over last week. As CBS News correspondent Skylar Henry reports from Washington, some health experts are saying the Omicron variant fueling this spike in cases could peak soon. As Omicron rips across the nation, some researchers are seeing indications it will soon begin to fade out as quickly as it surged. It's spreading so fast. It's going fast up 
and it's coming as faster coming down. There'll be a plateau at the national level simply because different states are peaking and coming down and different states are still going up. Meanwhile, the highly contagious variant is proving difficult to avoid, even for vaccinated Americans. Virtually everybody is going to wind up getting exposed and likely get infected. A new study shows that compared to Delta, the risk of death from Omicron is 91 percent lower and the risk of ICU admission is 74 percent less. On Wednesday, the White House COVID Task Force announced 10 million free PCR and rapid tests will be sent to schools each month in an effort to keep kids in the classroom. The nation's schools can and should be open. And officials said options to make more high-quality masks available to all Americans are being strongly considered. The best mask that you can that you wear is the one that you will wear and the one you can keep on all day long. In Chicago, students returned to school after classes were canceled for days amid a dispute with teachers over COVID safety protocols. We want our kids to be safe. We also want our kids in school. Glad that they're able to come to an agreement. Um, reasonably quickly. On Wednesday, union members voted to accept the agreement with the nation's third largest school district. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Oregon Governor Kate Brown announced she's deploying 700 additional members of the state National Guard to help at hospitals, which she says are under extreme pressure because of Omicron. New at 10, besides hospitals and local bars and restaurants feeling the pressure, so are our schools across the U.S. Madison Keeby reports from California on an ever-pressing demand, the need for substitute teachers. So the realities of what schools are facing in terms of just not having enough adult supervision in classrooms is putting a lot of stress on the system. That stress led to the governor's executive order that allows schools to extend substitute teacher assignments bring back retired educators to classrooms and speed up the hiring process for short term subs. These photos show students and educators in Folsom Cordova Unified School District. How dire is the situation for the need of substitute teachers? We need substitute teachers. Um, we need them pretty badly. Districts statewide are doubling or tripling daily rates for substitutes to keep students in person in the classroom. Getting answers in our area, what are districts willing to pay for a substitute? The answer depends on the district. In Elk Grove Unified School District, payment starts at $160 per full day. In Sacramento City Unified School District, between $147 and $224. In San Juan Unified School District, a regular guest or substitute teacher starts at $200. You're not jumping in alone. You're jumping in with materials that are there for you, classrooms that are set up. Let's take a look outside on the RV World of Yuma Sky Cam. Another look at our weather. A lot of cloud cover. Will it produce any rain? I'll let you know straight ahead in your first alert forecast. Create your forever with Paul Benzel Jewelers. I mean, the whole point of getting into journalism for me has always been about giving a voice to the voiceless and really like making sure that people who don't have opportunity to speak are heard. I feel like that's that's kind of why we're all in this industry, and that for me is the biggest like reminder of like, okay, if this person feels like they're not being heard, like we need to tell their story. So I don't think that in local news it's not about being one-sided, it's about telling both sides of the story and let the viewer decide their opinion and that's what we're all that's what we're here to do the new year's sale continues this holiday weekend at more furniture for less there's still time to get furniture you need for the new year's refresh your home deserves save store wide on our best sellers and newest arrivals we have new stock arriving daily and it's all priced to sell come in this holiday weekend for the very best in sale pricing only at More Furniture for Less. Preview all sales specials online at morefurniture.com. If they feel like we're not covering something, we work for them. We work for the public. We work for, you know, our community here. And so if, if they feel like we're not covering something or we're not following up on something, they're more than welcome to reach out to us and let us know and, and, 
keep us informed and let us know what we're not seeing or, you know, we can't be everywhere. So sometimes those viewer comments are important for us to know what it is that, you know, we might be missing. I mean, I take the viewer's trust very seriously and making sure that I'm doing the best job I can to keep people informed. Breaking news first. Extreme weather first. Border issues first. Agriculture first. Exclusive stories first. If it affects you, your family, your wallet, or your health. 13 on your side. First at four. Join Mercedes Martinez. 13 on your side. It's all first at 4 p.m. Welcome to 13 on your side. Hump day to all of you across the desert southwest. Hope you enjoyed your Wednesday today. Again, another day in the low to mid 70s. We can expect more of that tomorrow. More on our forecast in just a little bit. Right now, let's take a look outside together, shall we? In the RV world of Yuma Skycam, quite dark out there. We have some heavy cloud cover, some gusty winds throughout portions of the viewing area, but for the most part, it's going to be a pretty calm night. We're at right about 54 degrees right now. Let's take a look at our satellite radar, show you what we have throughout the area. Lots of cloud cover all the way along the Pacific coast and uh, making its way into the desert southwest, uh, uh, scaling all the way from the Baja California Peninsula all the way off into the ocean. Uh, that was from 730 this after this evening and uh, again, uh, still right over us. Again, it looks a little like Swiss cheese, so you may have some opportunities where you'll be able to see through some of the clouds to see the moon tonight, maybe some of the twinkling stars, but we will have heavy cloud cover with us into the weekend. Jumping ahead and take a look at our future cast. Here's what we have in store for tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, we have this high pressure system right here bringing in a lot of the, the warmer air that we have. Unfortunately, if you're up here in the Pacific Northwest, there's a low pressure system that's going to bring in some more rain and cooler air there along with the northeast. Really cold temperatures there. A look at our satellite and radar shows not a whole lot of activity throughout the United States. We are seeing some snow and some rain in the uh, northeast and a smattering up there in the Pacific Northwest. You can see that heavy cloud cover here in the desert southwest. Jumping ahead to our future wind scale. We'll have some windy conditions around Yuma, YPG, into tomorrow morning, and then things will start to taper off. Yeah, it's going to be very nice as we get into tomorrow evening. The wind's calming down into the low single digits. Right now, though, our air quality index really taking a hit in the Imperial Valley. Moderate readings in Brawley, Calexico, El Centro, Nyland, and Westmoreland still holding under that good rating, but Mexicali, as it seems to every night, now down in the unhealthy reading. Jumping ahead and Sticking in the Imperial Valley, let's take a look at our temperatures. 52 Imperial, 51 El Centro, 54 in Holtville, and 49 in Palo Verde across the county and state line into Yuma County, Arizona, also known as the Gila Valley. We're at 54 degrees in Yuma, 56 in the Foothills, 53 in YPG, and going to southern La Paz County, 53 in Quartzsite. Our viewer photo of the day comes in from the Quartzsite area. David Williams took a photo while he was out camping just south of Quartzsite and got this. Look at the rays of sunshine as the sun is rising in the east. David caught this and said, Scott, it looks exactly like the Arizona state flag. You know what, David? It absolutely does. Great capture. Thank you, David, for sending that our way. And if you have a photo you'd like to share, you can have it in your own gallery. Yeah, you can put it in a gallery by scanning that QR code. It's like you're taking a photo of it, and it'll take you right to the weather photo gallery from there. Upload your photo from your phone, include your name, maybe a slight description as well, or you can just find me on social media or drop it off like David did on our homepage at kyma.com slash share. A look at our Metrocast. Tonight, heavy cloud cover still around midnight. We'll be at 54 degrees. Tomorrow when you wake up to start your Thursday, New Year's Eve Eve will be at 47 degrees and tomorrow at noon 66 under partly cloudy skies but we're going to get warmer from there here's your 70 forecast take a look 74 and warm tomorrow 77 and warmer on Friday we possibly could hit 80 degrees gusty conditions come our way on Saturday dry conditions as we have our way through a holiday weekend also a look at the Imperial Valley Mid-70s all the way through, a chance for 80 again on Friday. Also a small chance we may see some rain on Friday as well. Breezy conditions pick up on Saturday, but beautiful weather. Despite the cloud cover, we're going to be in the mid-70s for the next week. 
Next on 13 on your side, a battle on the soccer pitch on Yuma's west side between the local power at San Luis and Cibola. The score and highlights straight ahead in sports. Although it seems like any ordinary day, it isn't. For one extraordinary reason. Because now with Spectrum Mobile, you get unlimited on two or more lines for $29.99 a line. This is a huge deal that'll make you feel larger than life. Get unlimited from Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 with nationwide 5G included. Call 1-844-955-2999. It's the biggest news in mobile with the best deal ever. Get unlimited talk, text, and data for only $29.99 with no contracts, added taxes, or hidden fees, and nationwide 5G included. Save up to 60% on your mobile bill. Get gigantic savings with Unlimited from Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99. Call 1-844-955-2999 or visit a store near you. Switch today and you too will feel larger than life. Cocopa Casino and Resort is handing out cold cash in January. You could win up to $1,000 with a grand prize of $5,000 in cold cash. Every Friday and Saturday, two winners every hour could win up to $1,000. Then on January 29th, one lucky winner will be drawn for $5,000. Earn entries by playing your favorite slots or table games with your rewards card. If you're not a member, just drop by the Cocopa Rewards Club and get your card. Membership is free. We love our locals at Cocopa Casino and Resort, South Highway 95 in Somerton. Nick Bolton here with the latest from Bell & Howell. We call them Tack Glasses. Inspired by the sunglasses worn by our heroes in uniform, Tack Glasses block blinding glares so well, invisible objects suddenly become visible. Enhance colors to give you vision as sharp as an eagle's and survive even the harshest conditions. Look, ordinary sunglasses just make things darker, which could be deadly in a tactical situation. Tack Glasses improve optical clarity so you can see clearly even in low light. If you've never seen how this light filtering technology works, check this out. Nothing to see, right? But look again as we hold up our tack glasses. A colorful American Eagle is revealed. Amazing. Act now to get your tack glasses for just $19.99. And we'll even ship it to you free. So don't delay. Order yours today. To order, call 1-800-287-1705. Again, that's 1-800-287-1705. Or order online at trytacglasses.com. A high stakes prep boys soccer showdown goes down on Yuma's west side. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Scott Gross. Both the San Luis Sidewinders and the Cibola Raiders came into tonight's first season meeting with unbeaten 6 0 records, and both area powers are ranked in the top 10 in the 6A division in the AIA. We take you out to Raider Field where both programs would chomp at the bit to get after one another. Second half, Sidewinders are going to be on offense. Take a watch here. David Murillo has a give and go exchange with Masil Mesa and his setter pass easily corralled by Cibola keeper Gabriel Yanez. Matches scoreless this point. A few minutes later, off the Raiders' corner, Luis Lopez's shot attempt is denied by San Luis's keeper, then knocked out of bounds by Luis Paul Meneses. Sidewinders back on the attack. Marino would deliver the setter to Mesa, and he rolls the shot right by Yanez for the tiebreaker. 1 0 San Luis. And the Sidewinders would keep on pressing Roberto Uribe, trying to go lone wolf. Attempting to get by a trio of Raiders defenders, but Jacob Quintana would wind up clearing the rock out of the zone. It would be a defensive battle through and through as San Luis comes through with the 1-0 win. They advance now to 7-0. Moving on to the hardwood, Coach Dennis Ponder and the Cibola Raiders looking to capitalize on last night's Yuma victory as they took on... Corona del Sol. We pick it up in the second quarter. Bennett Meyer Wills gets the call, misses the jumper, but Carlos Navarro gets the offensive board and the putback. Raiders down by a bucket. Then Anthony Elmarez with the shot block. Meyer Wills comes up with the rock and heaves it up court to Trey Banks, who finishes the play. Raiders keeping the pace with the Aztecs. Then the visitors turn the ball over to Banks, who finds a wide open Elmarez near the bucket for the easy deuce. Cibola trying to take the lead. A few minutes later, Banks inbounds the ball to Meyer Wills, 
who comes up golden with the quick bucket. The Raiders would get cold, though, for the rest of the half and would falter down the stretch, taking the tough 60-50 to 50 loss at home. To the house, or ACCAC Player of the Week, Alliance and Deba in the Arizona Western Lady Matadors in search of win number 15 on the season against the Coyotes of Chandler Gilbert. Early first half, Faith Silva on the drive will miss the shot, but Christiana Bryan is there for the rebound and the putback Lady Mats with the Knights' first bucket. Coyotes respond. Mesa freshman Maya Johnson finds Tuba City's Alaya Black Hat, who connects from long range. Coyotes up one. Matadors answer as Teresa De Silva drives the lane, finds Faith Silva, and Silva and De Silva with a little give and go before Faith Silva makes the splash from deep. Lady Mats pulling away. Later, the Mats in transition, Busse Utku dishes to Alliance and Deba. And Deba with the easy bucket. Arizona Western pulling away and up by four. Matadors showing off the defense. Teresa De Silva with the steal, then leads the charge and then dumps off to Misa Gilberto, who finishes the job. Lady Matadors roll at home 102 49 and are now 15 and 1 on the season. Alliance and Deba led the way with 27 points and 19 boards. The Arizona Cardinals hope to have another defensive weapon on the field when they play the Los Angeles Rams on Monday night. Star defensive lineman is inching closer to a return. That's J.J. Watt. He's expected to test out his injured shoulder tomorrow at practice. And star wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins is still an IR and will not play. Looking for a few good soldiers? We'll pay you more than we used to. The U.S. Army is rolling out the red carpet to new recruits. Details straight ahead. Dear Exit Strategy, all your pieces are in place. A tranquil lake, a serene sky, an emerald forest, a secret hideout. Thanks for being there just when I need you most. Always Toyota SUVs. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care, our no-cost maintenance plan. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. A new year brings in new savings at More Furniture for Less. And we're making it easy for you to create the bedroom of your dreams during our New Year's sale. This contemporary queen bed with upholstered headboard is only $4.95. Get this transitional bed in your choice of two colors for only $5.50. Or this arch panel solid wood bed for only $7.95. Check out these values and more going on during the New Year's sale. Only at More Furniture for Less. Visit morefurniture.com to preview all sales specials. Arizona's come a long way in the battle against COVID-19, but there's still a lot of work to do. Our hospitals are strained because of COVID-19 patients, most of whom are unvaccinated. To protect yourself and to help hospitals care for everyone, we need more people to get the vaccine. It's safe, free, and extremely effective. If you are vaccinated, we need you to get a booster so your protection is up to date. COVID-19 vaccines and boosters save lives. Roll up your sleeve today. Careful, your regular old can opener leaves razor sharp edges. Ouch! You need the new Safety Can Express. Now you can pop the top off and leave perfectly smooth edges on the lid and the can. Other openers use blades to cut through the lid, leaving razor sharp edges. Safety Can Express actually unseals the lid from the side, leaving smooth, safe edges. Safety Can works on broken pop top cans, dented cans, big heavy cans, small odd shaped cans too. No more sharp steel when Safety Can breaks the seal. Call and get the new Safety Can Express for just $29.99. But wait, call now and you can double your order. Just pay a separate fee. We'll even ship it to you fast and free. This offer is not available on Amazon. Call now. Call 1-800-991-1611 or visit safetycanexpress.com. So call 1-800-991-1611 now. Before we go tonight, the U.S. Army is upping the ante for anyone mulling the idea of joining the military branch. The U.S. Army is now offering a max bonus of $50,000 for anyone who enlists because of recruitment issues. According to the Army, the pandemic is to blame, preventing visitors at schools and canceling public events where recruiters typically found new candidates. Previously, the maximum bonus was $40,000. It's given to highly skilled recruits who joined for six years. The Army hopes to enlist close to 60,000 new recruits 
this year alone. Let's take a look outside in your weather one more time. Here's your seven day forecast. Again, we should be in the mid to upper 70s for the next week. Our average for this time of year is 68 to 69 degrees. Our average low for Yuma is 46, 77, possibly 80 on Friday. Gusty winds return on Saturday to start our weekend and a look at the Imperial Valley. Very nice tomorrow despite the cloud cover, a warmer day. Again, we could touch 80 on Friday, maybe a light shower here and there on Friday as well in the valley, but for the most part in the mid 70s for the next week. That's our newscast. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Be safe out there, everybody. I'm Scott Gross. Stay tuned. Stephen Colbert is next.